Hello again and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop and today we're going to take a little bit of a side road from where we've been going so far. Uh, today we're going to create a login screen. And the reason I want to create a login screen is because this is really going to start to combine some of the skills that we've already learned and put them together into an application. And so you can start to see how the tables, the queries, and the VBA all starts to work together in order to make your screens work. Okay, And one really neat way of doing a login screen is the method I'm going to go through with you today. It's not the typical way. Some people prefer that you have two text boxes and then you match up one to the other and then if the you know if the username matches the pa if the password typed in matches whatever the username has uh, then you know they're allowed. But in this particular case what I've decided to do is make a combo box. I'm gonna make a drop down box where the user is going to be able to select a username and we're actually going to hold the password associated with that username in the combo box and then we're going to check if the text that they type in the password text box matches what is in the combo box okay and you may be thinking that's a little risky I don't want to show the password in the combo box and we're going to cover that okay where it kind of takes us back to one of the skills that we learned in an earlier video so here's what we're going to do we're going to go back into our database here we already have our table one employees table I just want to show you this first name last name password and username what I want is for my combo box to just show the username here as a drop down and then the password is going to be a hidden field on that combo box so it's going to be on the combo box but the user's not going to be able to see it alright so how are we going to do that well first let's go ahead and start out by creating our form it doesn't need to be a big form it's just going to be a small little one here we're just going to go ahead and add our combo box don't need to go through the wizard and then we're going to add a text box here and we're going to name our combo or we're going to give uh, our, our drop down box here our username uh, combo box a little label here so that people know that that's the username combo box and then this is obviously where they're going to type in the password and let's do some alignment here make things look all nice and pretty because our our users always like things to look nice and pretty uh, okay so about the same width I think that's pretty wide enough I'm gonna go ahead and add a button here which they're going to click on now I'm not gonna go through the wizard I don't need the wizard but this button is what the user is gonna click on to try to go ahead and proceed to log in I'm gonna change this then to say from command 64 to log in and now what we need to do is we need to go in and name each one of these controls okay because when we're working with the VBA code in the back we're gonna need to be able to identify which control is what so I'm gonna click on the combo box go to the other tab and change the name to CBO username alright then I'm gonna go to the password text box I'm gonna change this to text password and then I'm gonna go to the login button and I'm gonna change this to button login alright so those are my three control names button login the text password and CBO username alright now a very common practice for a password text box is that when the user types in letters it's not visible on the screen instead the text box will simply display dot 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 and that's uh, something that we're gonna go ahead and add to this form so I'm gonna select the text box and if I go to the data tab you'll see this input mask and on the input mask if I click on the ellipsis we have an input mask of password that is selectable this is already created by access it's already available so you don't have to do anything with input masks other than just select the password one here so I'm gonna go ahead and finish that I don't need to click on next because next would have just taken me to a screen that just said finish so we're gonna go ahead and finish that and now our input mask is going to have text so if I just show you here if I just type something in you'll see it comes up all asterisks okay I also don't like this little thing on the left hand side here so I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the design view here go to format and that is I just gotta find it here oh make sure that I'm selecting the right thing here there we go 
that is our where'd you go where'd you go ah navigation buttons we don't want those and we also don't want record selectors okay there we go all right so that's just going to make it so there's no left hand uh, margin on the left and there's no buttons down here at the bottom we just have a blank screen with just the controls that we want all right so we've already set our input mask for our password and now for our username this is what we're gonna do we're gonna go to the data tab and under the row source we're gonna click on the ellipsis here okay and this gives us our little query builder we're gonna select a table one employees table and add it and we only need two fields the first one that we want is going to be the username field which we're going to display to the user in the combo box and then we also want the password field okay so these are the two fields that we're going to add to our combo box a username and a password let's go ahead and just click on save and close that out and now if I just click on this and show you right now our combo box shows our two users but the problem is is that our combo box even though we said that we want the uh, row source to be both the username and the password it's not actually in the list here the password is not a part of the list what we have to do is we have to add it as a column to display in the combo box that may sound a little weird but trust me first we're going to go to the format tab over here on the combo box and we're going to change the column count from one to two okay and that is the key difference that's the key to what I've been talking about if we had this just when we had this just set to one even though our data row source was two separate was two different fields they weren't actually getting put into the combo box only the first column was actually in the combo box it was just basically ignoring the second column so we need to change the column count to two now the problem with doing that is that now I've got the username and the password displaying. Well, I don't want somebody to be able to go to this form, click on the drop down, and see, oh, S Bishop's use, uh, password is password. So the way we handle that is like we have before. We're going to go to the column widths. We're going to change this. It doesn't really matter, but if I set this to one inch, um, it's it's that's essentially what I'm doing when I do one and then I do a quotation mark. I'm going to set that to one inch. And really, this is going to auto expand because what I'm going to add now is a column of zero inches. And what will happen is this will take up the entire combo box width, and this will take up none of the column bo uh, the combo box width. However, this is still a column in the combo box. It's just not going to display to the user. It's going to be holding our password values, but not be visible because it is a zero inch width all right so that's pretty neat I don't need column heads I don't need a lot of those other features I'm just gonna go ahead and show you that now again I just see the username but now the difference is is that the password is in this combo box it's just not visible all right so that's great now let's start dealing with some of the code I'm gonna go to the login button and the first thing I want to do is I actually kinda wanna change this to my default uh, and when you change the default for a button under the other tab if you change it to yes that means that this is the default button on the form and when somebody use hits the enter key while they're on the form this button will automatically be clicked so it's just as if somebody took the mouse and hit the click on it when they uh, when they hit the enter button on their keyboard alright so now I'm gonna go to the login button I'm gonna go to event and in the on click event I'm going to click on the ellipsis go to our code builder and automatically we have our sub created for us alright great so now what we want to do is we want to take out the values from the combo box and from the password and see if it actually works so we're gonna go ahead and say dim string uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, let's go with combo box password as string and dim str password 
as string. And you know what? I could probably make this a little easier. Let's just do CBO, string CBO pass. There we go. All right, good enough. All right, now what we're gonna do is we need, now that we've got our two variables created for memory, we need to get the values from our form, from our controls, and put them in those uh, string variables. So let's go ahead and say str cbo pass. Now this is going to be the combo box password. It is equal to, and if I type a magical keyword called me, when I type me, that means I'm referring to the form itself. That means I'm, retur re I'm returning the form that the user is interacting with here, okay? It's a magical keyword that really helps us because now when I type in me and I press dot, you'll get the automatic uh, IntelliSense that gives me the full list of properties for the form as well as all of the different, um, like the combo box that we created, all the different controls. So if I type CBO, notice that we have CBO username, okay? So on the me form, there is a CBO username control, and in that control, there are columns, okay? And in the columns property of the CBO username, you can select a specific column and a specific value from it. So I'm gonna go ahead and in parentheses, I get this option to select an index. Now the column property on a combo box is zero based, just like arrays are, okay? Matter of fact, you can think of it as an array. You can think of the, com of the combo box as an array of values. So I need not the first column, which would be zero, because remember, that's our username. Instead, I want the second column, which is where we're holding the password, right? So there is how we are going to grab the password that we stored in the combo box. Okay, we're, we're looking at me, which is the form, the combo box called CBO username, and then we're going to the column, and then in we're using the index of one or subscript of one in order to get the second column in that combo box. Okay, and then we're gonna put that value into strcbo pass. Okay, so whatever the username selects in that combo box is going to have the password next to the username that they've selected. It's going to be dropped into this CBO pass uh, variable. All right, now we want to go ahead and add or assign the value of me txt password to str password. So me.txt password goes into the str password variable. Now, we need to run our if statements. If str cbo pass equals str password, then, and I'm gonna go ahead and add my end if just so that I don't forget it. We're gonna, if it is matching, then message box, login, successful. All right. If that is not the case, then we want to do an else. Message box, login, unsuccessful. I hope I'm spelling that right. <laughs> Alrighty. So, just to reiterate, just to go back over this, we're going to dim ourselves two variables. One is going to be holding the CBO password, the combo box password. One is going to be holding our text box password. We're going to take, in order to assign to the strcbo pass variable, we're going to go into me, which is the form. We're going to go to the cbo username control, which we created on the form. And we're going to look at the column index value of one and get its value. So whatever the user selects from here, okay, we're going to drop that into our string cbo password variable. Then we're going to take whatever they typed in the text box, uh, txt password, drop that into the string, and then we're going to compare the two values together, and based upon whether or not they are equal to each other or not equal to each other, we will display a 
message box to the user telling them whether or not they were successful. All right. It wants me to save the form, so I'm going to go ahead and go form login. Go ahead and close our VBA window here. And select my name here. Type in my password. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the Enter key. And you'll see login is successful. Okay. It doesn't take us to any new screen. We would obviously need to add logic. And we'll talk about how to add logic later uh, to open up a new window. But I just wanted you to see how you can design a login, scre uh, login screen fairly simply. And with some ease of use, this is a, a very common practice for login screens to show a whole list of different users uh, and allow the user to select from it. And because we want to utilize that combo box, it allows us to save the password as part of the combo box, and then we can just go ahead and compare it. Uh, one last thing I want to do here is just show you that if I type in the wrong password and click on login, we get login unsuccessful. All right, so there you go. There's how you create a login screen. Uh, a little bit later on, we will also go over how to make this your first screen that somebody pulls up when they, uh, when they access the database, and that's kind of an important thing to do, too. So I hope you enjoy. Please, uh, please li uh, go ahead and like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. Go ahead and tell anybody that you might know that's looking or interested in access uh, videos. Go ahead and tell them about my website uh, or about, I'm sorry, the YouTube video site here. And I look forward to seeing you later.